So for this first learning objective, what you need to do is you've got to be able to evaluate certain things that are going to have an influence over a media product. So when it comes to actually do the planning, what sort of things are going to help it to be a good, successful product or that might have a negative impact on it? So if we start off by taking a look at some of the physical factors, so actual physical things that can have an influence over your production. So first of all, it's the type of production. Then we've got to look at the time and um, the planning and the constraints revolving around time. Then we've got to look at the finance and how all the finance is related and also any resources that are involved. So first of all, obvious big, big, big thing that's going to have an effect on your production is what type of production is it? So if you were creating a website, for example, that is going to take a lot less time than doing a big Hollywood blockbuster movie. So these are the things that you need to think about is what is the type of production and how is that going to affect things differently? So different types of products are going to require different planning. If you are doing a film, then you're going to have to do all sorts of pre-production. You're going to have to do your storyboards. You're going to have to come up with concept art. You're going to have to do all of your casting. You're going to have to do a big pre-production schedule. You're going to have to do call sheets and um, all sorts of different um, work. But if you're going to do a website or if you're going to do a comic book or a magazine, then things are obviously going to be completely different. So one thing you need to think about is that that type of production can have a big implication on the process. Another thing that you need to think about is the time. So obviously time can be a really, really important factor and the time constraints can be very, very important. So for example, if you've only got three months to complete a film, that's going to be really difficult to do a lot of things. You've got to think about the people that are going to be in your film. Are they going to be available for each production that you want to do? So say, for example, you were going to make a Terminator film. You need to think about when is Arnold Schwarzenegger available? What is his schedule like? That can have a big, big um, problem, big, big constraint over your production. If he's only available for a certain time, it's going to make things very difficult for you. Another important time constraint is the deadline. So if you fail to meet the deadline for your product, then you're going to obviously result in a big, big financial loss. The studio are going to be not very impressed with you. If it's a website, then the company are not going to be happy and they're going to want a refund or they're not going to go with you. They're going to use somebody else. All these kind of things are really important when it comes to time. One little technique, one little method that people often do is plan backwards. If you think about what the final product is going to look like and they think about everything that they're going to need to do to get to that final product, by doing that, you can kind of create a to-do list and a production schedule, which will help you to create a time scale where you can follow it really well, make sure everything goes according to plan and you avoid as many problems as possible. Another major factor that has influence over a, the planning of a production is financial constraints. So how much finance have you got? How viable is your project going to be? You've got to think about how much money have you got. If you're making a video in your sixth form college and you know, you've basically got a zero budget, then you can't start putting CGI characters in. You can't have transformers running around everywhere in the background. You can't have explosions. You've got to think about how much money you've got, how um, how you can put that money to best use. So if you know what your budget is, that helps you a lot when it comes to the planning. You can think about what things are going to be viable and what things aren't going to be viable. What could you possibly actually have in the film? Another thing you need to think about is what are the actual costs because a lot of these go unnoticed. You don't really think about them until you start actually doing the film itself or whichever production you're working on really. So some of the costs include the staffing. So when it comes to films, TV shows, the directors and actors are really, really variable when it comes to costs. Some directors uh, are going to cost an absolute fortune, millions and millions to hire them. And the same with the actors. However, they've obviously got a lot of advantages. They're more successful and um, they're more well-known. Uh, you're going to get 
better quality product at the end. However, obviously if you get a lesser known actor that can still do a good job, you will save a lot of money. When it comes to premises, you need to think about where are you going to film. Some places are going to be a lot cheaper uh, to film than others. Places where you go to stay, so say if you film the entire thing in America and you want to put your whole cast and crew up in hotels, that's going to cost a lot of money. The same when it comes to locations, just in general, um, sectioning off part of a city in a big major city like New York is going to be very, very expensive. If you go to quite a kind of vast open space in Wales where there's not really many people, then it's not going to cost you as much to, to film in that location. Legal costs. If you start using music by well-known artists, that's going to cost you a lot of money to put those um, bits of music in your film. Same when it comes to sound effects. If you want to put, like, make a Star Wars film, for example, you need to use all the official Star, Star Wars sound effects. They cost a lot of money to use. Um, things like that that you don't really think about when you first start out. Think about transport. Whereabouts are you filming? How much is it going to cost to, to get everybody over there? Um, the same with resources. If you want to film in Super HD IMAX, then you need to get those cameras. You need to make sure that you have all the equipment. If you want to film a big war film and you need to get tanks and props and guns and uniforms, that costs a lot of money. So all of these things are financial constraints. They can have a major, major effect on the production. You need to think carefully what these constraints are and alternatives of what you could do. So the final thing that can have a big impact on the final production of a media product is the resources. What resources do you have available? So obviously finance links to this and time as well because you know you might not be able to access certain resources with a certain time and obviously you won't be able to afford them if you don't have the right finance but resources are really really important to a production you need to have the right equipment you need to have the right locations you need to have props you need to have sets you might need microphones you might need printers you might need scanners you might need all sorts of different things you need to think about resources and how they can have an impact on your production. If you have access to whatever it is that you need, then obviously the production is more likely to be a success. If you don't have certain resources that you might need, then obviously it's not going to be as successful. Okay, so one thing to look at when it comes to finance is where are you getting the money from? Where are you actually going to get the money to fund your product? So one of these things that we can look at is called franchising now this is a revenue stream so when you see the term revenue stream used by the exam board it's basically talking about where are you getting the money from where is this stream or flow of cash coming from so if we start with franchising this is where you're basically going to sell the idea or some part of your product to other people so that they can use it so an example of this could be star wars for example they have made their their movie in the 70s and they decide to sell the intellectual property to mattel toys who can then go away and make a load of star wars figures and claim all the merchandise money for it so they can either get a percentage of all the toy sales or they could sell the rights to star wars to this toy company so that's one big source of cash. Obviously, you're not going to get the money until afterwards because the toy company are not going to bid for a movie that doesn't already exist. But when the new ones are coming out, they could use part of the funding of new toys that they sell as part of the budget for the film. If we look at sponsorship, this is quite an obvious one. It happens with things like football teams all the time. It's where people will pay you to be associated with your production. That could be literally as small as, oh, we want you to drive our car in your film or we want you to drink this drink in, our, in your film so that that company gets some advertising within your production. Then you've got advertising, so money in return for product placements. Very, very similar as with sponsorship, except this one is more like advertising boards, posters, T-shirts and things like that. With sponsorship, it's where they want to be associated with you. So when the movie is coming out, it will say in association with such and such. This happens quite a lot with um, things like 
TV productions. So like a football match, for example, it will have like in association with Ford or it'll come up like um, Man of the Match, Barclays Man of the Match is such and such. That is sponsorship to, to do with the media production. Corporate finance is when somebody is actually investing into your product. Sometimes they might want to be a silent partner. Sometimes they want some sort of credit. So you might see it pop up sometimes, executive producer with somebody's name. They want their name to be credited, but they have contributed some money to allow the production to go ahead. So what you'd basically do as a revenue stream for corporate finance is you'd go to different companies, studios, businesses, ask them for funding to help you make your film. In return, you will give them credit. Crowdfunding. Now, this is a um, much more modern way of raising money. It's where you can use things like social media and websites to try and get people to contribute to your idea. So you would pitch your proposal. You would say, this is what I want to do. I need this amount of money. Who wants to contribute? Who wants to see this happen? And people will contribute in return for credit. Uh, finally, you've got the government or lottery funding. So there are actually um, agencies that deal in distributing lottery funds. So when people are putting the lottery on and they're paying a pound, two pound, three pound, whatever it is that they put on each time, that money goes into a lottery fund and part of it is used to fund movies, uh, TV shows, all sorts of different media products that are beneficial to the country in some way. And it follows a particular set of guidelines. If you meet all of these guidelines, then you can be eligible to get funding. Sometimes it's direct funding. Sometimes it might be tax relief where you just don't need to pay tax on the production. So a really, really important thing to think about when it comes to things that can impact on a media production is legislation. We need to make sure that you follow certain laws, otherwise you're going to get yourself into serious trouble. Now, a lot of people just don't think about this properly until it comes down to it, but there's so much documentation, so many forms you need to fill in to make sure that everything's done by the book. So the laws that we need to look at for this particular unit start with the Copyright Act. Now, you've probably done this so many times, but what you need to think about is how this can impact on your production. Now, it's quite difficult to just find assets from the internet or from other sources that aren't copyright protected. So you've got to always keep in mind, well, are we just going to create everything from scratch? Or are there certain things that we might be able to use if we ask for permission? Starting from scratch is obviously a time consuming process, but it's the only way really to be completely 100% sure that you're not going to get yourself into trouble. This is a really, really safe one to use when it comes to answering in the exam, because no matter what the production is that you're going to create, this piece of legislation is very important. So it's one thing that you could put for pretty much every answer. Any legislation that you need to follow is going to be the Copyright Act for any media production. You cannot just copy work without asking for permission. Intellectual property, a lot of people get this confused with copyright because it sounds very similar, it's saying that you need to ask for permissions before you use something. The difference is, is that intellectual property normally refers to people's ideas rather than the actual work that they've created. Another really thing that a uh, really important thing with intellectual property is if you work for a company, then anything that you make, any ideas that you have while working for that company, they belong to the company. Now, this is really good for a business to actually protect themselves with, because if somebody uh, gets sacked or decides to leave or if they, whatever reason they part ways with the company, doesn't mean that they can just go, oh, well, I made this and I made that, so I'm going to take it with me when I leave. It protects the company and it protects the assets that have been created. The Freedom of Information Act is basically allows people this really, really useful thing for people working in the media. When it comes to doing research, which we'll look at in a, in a different learning objective, but when it comes to carrying out research for a media product, it's a big time consuming process. You need to get as much information, as many facts, 
as many little stories and things as possible that you can get hold of. Now, the Freedom of Information Act means that you can get hold of this information legally by putting a request in. And that makes your job a lot easier and it gives you a lot of information, a lot of data. A lot of true stories and docu uh, documentaries that you'll see, they have put this act to good use. They've used it. They've got as much information as they can. And it makes it easier when it comes to developing your story. In the pictures here, you'll see a couple of different pictures that relate to some of these laws. So I've put Vanilla Ice, who breached the Copyright Act by stealing some of Queen's music in one of his songs. Um, I've put JFK on there because it's a it's a film based about real life, about true stories, and it, it revolves around the Freedom of Information Act, which was actually used to get a lot of information for the film. Um, and also, you've got Louis Walsh. Now, Louis Walsh is going to relate to this libel one that we're going to go through. So, libel and slander. Libel is when a media product, usually a magazine or a newspaper, has written something that is not true. So, a magazine writes something that isn't true about somebody. Somebody says something on the radio or in a film that isn't true. You can then be sued by that person. Usually, this is when they feel like they've been defamed in some way. So, defamation is where your character is being damaged by somebody else. So, in the Louis Walsh's case, um, it was the Sun newspaper and they published the story saying that he was involved in a sexual assault. It wasn't true and he sued them for £500,000. Slander is the same as libel, but it's verbally. So, if somebody does it verbally, uh, in an interview or any sort of like documentary says something that isn't true then they could be uh, have le legal action taken against them data protection act is another one where you can use it for most media productions anything that you're working on at all if you hold information about people it's your responsibility to protect that information so that could be any of your cast any of your crew that are working on the product any of your staff, any actors, if you hold information about them, you have to keep it protected. You have to keep it secure. So something that we've done in unit one, but there's a couple of extra regulatory bodies and a little bit more detail. And you need to think about how these can have an impact on your actual product as well. So we're going to look at the ASA, PEGI, PRS, BBFC, Ofcom, IPSO and W3C. So the first regulatory body to look at is the Advertising Standards Agency. Now, this obviously oversees any adverts. So that is going to relate to a lot of media products because even if you don't have adverts in the product itself, you yourself might want to advertise your product. So you need to make sure that you follow the rules. In other words, what you're looking to do is two things, really. If you make something like a mobile app, you need to think about what adverts might go in that app. You want to make sure that they're not offensive to people, that they don't um, cause harm, that you don't get yourself into bother over any adverts that are shown within your product. When you're advertising your own product, you need to make sure that you're not doing false advertising. You're not basically advertising something that isn't true. You've also got to think about how the advert might be offensive to certain people. So if you do a little bit of research on your own into Advertising Standards Agency, you can find all sorts of different cases that have been held up or overturned by the Advertising Standards Agency. Um, Peggy oversee computer games. So any sort of mobile app, educational um, app that you might download, anything like that, as well as proper computer games on Xbox, PlayStation and so on. They basically give each thing an age rating saying what it's suitable for so you need to think about is the game that i'm looking for going to be suitable for the audience so if my target audience is 12 year olds for example i can't put in content that's going to be for over 18s because peggy is going to give it a certificate as an 18 and your target audience is cut off straight away the prs a little bit complicated how they work but basically what they do is they look after royalties for music 
So if you want to include music in your production, you need to contact the PRS and you basically pay them to use the music in your production. The PRS makes sure that everybody gets what they are owed for the music. So if you make a song and it gets used in a film, you need to get paid for that. Ofcom is a really, really big thing that covers so many different things, but it's basically any sort of communication is covered by Ofcom. So if you post um, content on like something like Netflix, uh, if you create a radio station, if you do a TV show, anything that is broadcast publicly, Ofcom oversee it. So they will look at people's interests, whether certain people have been offended, what is and isn't allowed to be done online. They also look at things like what um, telecoms things are being offered. So O2 and all the different mobile broadband operators are governed by Ofcom as well. Yeah, and you've got Ipso. So Ipso is any newspapers and magazines are governed by Ipso. They do similar things to the others where they just make sure that everything is being followed properly. Everything's upheld. There's no libel going on. Um, no offensive articles, no offensive adverts within the magazines and newspapers. Finally, you've got W3C. So this is like a big set of guidelines that are supposed that every website is supposed to follow. So if you don't follow the W3C rules, there's a good chance that your website's going to get taken down from the internet finally is bbfc which you looked at in a lot of detail in unit one they are basically the company that decide what certificate a certain film would be now this can have a big big impact on your media product if you're making a film again to make the most money you want to make sure that you have as many people getting in to see it as possible so you need to think about the content. Is it going to be passed as an 18 certificate? Is it? If it is, then you're going to miss out on a lot of people that are under 18. However, do you want to please the audience? Is your target audience adults? Do you want to please them? Then you might want to put in all the content that you want and not worry about younger people. All of this is dictated by the BBFC, so you need to make sure that you follow what their rules are. So the final thing that can have an impact on your media production is ethical issues. When you're making whatever product it is, you always need to think ethically. You need to think about morally as well, what is right and wrong when you're pre creating a media product. So the things that we've looked at in the past, things like objectification of women, stereotypes in the media, how people can be offended by certain content. That's what we need to go into for ethical issues. So ethical is generally considered as what's right and wrong. So you can do something correct legally. You might follow all the legislation. You do everything by the book. Everything is legally fine. However, is it ethically correct to show certain things in the media, to put certain things in your products? So for example, you could create a magazine, put in an advert that is ethically incorrect in a lot of people's opinions. So you could put certain adverts that objectify women. You could make a film and have stereotypes in. You could make it set in a high school and it stereotypically has an Asian child who's really intelligent and good at maths. You might have a Jewish boy who's really tight-fisted and wealthy. You might put in a blonde girl who's quite promiscuous. All of these things that are stereotyped could be seen as ethically incorrect or wrong in some way. You could put content in the TV show where you show it that it's a good thing to take drugs, for example. Is that ethically correct to do so? No, probably not. So sometimes you can use certain things as a way of marketing your products. So sometimes people push the boundaries on the ethical issues as a marketing tool. So one way that you could maybe make it successful as a product is to push the boundaries a little bit. So you could maybe do something that's a bit controversial and that'll get you a bit more fame and more people will watch the film or production or TV show, whatever it is. However, if you do push the professional boundaries, maybe you could end up getting a damaged reputation. 
So as a studio or as an actor or as a producer, you could get a damaged reputation that sometimes you might not recover from. If it was something to do with magazines, newspapers, you could end up going out of business. So this has been learning objective one. It's all of the things that can have an impact on the actual production of the media. So you've got to think about what is good, what is bad about these particular things. Ethical, regulatory, legislation and the physical factors that can affect a media production.